Hello, everyone. This is the Free American Press with your host, Alexander Horat. Today, we're having a very special guest on the show. He's a congressional candidate here in California. He's running for District 13. His name is Diego Martinez, and we're really happy to have him on the show. Hello, D Diego. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me on your show all the way here in California, trying to make a difference in uh, District 13. Yeah, that's really great. So could you tell the viewers a little bit uh, why you're running and some things you want to uh, fix in the federal government? Well, a lot of people in uh, California know that I ran in the recall for governor. And what we realized is that we didn't have enough legs or enough support to be able to run in such a big 58 uh, county. So we narrowed it down to my district, which is District 13, is the Central Valley of California. We have five counties to run, and it makes more sense to actually start in Congress and work our way up till we can make a name for ourselves and actually get more donations to where we can build and come back into California and run uh, for governor maybe down the road. Yeah, well, that sounds like a good idea. Uh, so what uh, what is the difference between you and some of the other candidates who are running for this district? You know, one of the biggest differences, I have big roots in the Central Valley. I worked in Merced, California, which is our biggest population area for over 10 years. I'm Hispanic in a 55% uh, Hispanic market. So not name recognition doesn't always get there, but the ability to be able to speak Spanish and actually go out and get uh, different voters. See, one thing that everybody always talks about is uh, go get the Hispanic vote, go get the Asian vote, go get the African-American vote. What we forget to do is just go get votes, go get people who actually want to come and actually vote, but you got to meet people. So what my campaign's doing, we're doing a neighborhood outreach program. We actually go out to neighborhoods. We actually spend time in neighborhoods by walking the neighborhoods, meeting people and actually talking to them. We don't ask them what party they belong to because we really don't care. We feel that both parties have failed the American people from the Democratic Party with, if you don't believe that, look at your gas prices, to the Republican Party, especially here in California, when we actually looked at a recall and we didn't have one single elected official come out and say, hey, yes, on the recall and actually get behind us to do this. So we're telling everybody, my campaign, I am a Republican. I believe in the uh, conservative values. I believe in your second amendment, but I believe in the freedom of choice and the first amendment, which is freedom of speech. If we go out and we talk to people and we say, hey, this is what we're about. This is why you need to like somebody like me compared to somebody else. Blue collar worker, have my own business, start from nothing. I'm living the American dream and I wanna share that dream with the next generation. We're one generation away from socialism. That's the truth. Ronald Reagan said it best, but let's not let that happen and let's not let that be our generation that causes that. But a lot of Democrats, a lot of libertarians, a lot of Republicans are sick and tired of where California is and where America is. So our best message is first Hispanic in a plus 55 Hispanic um, uh, district, deep roots from working in the auto industry in that, di uh, that district, to being on radio for five years and Spanish radio in that district. I have a house there. My family lives there. This is the perfect opportunity for us to, people say take a seat, but it's a brand new district. So you can't say flip a seat. This is a great opportunity for us to get a seat and get a real voice that will actually represent the California people and the people of district 13. And that's why I'm the best choice. Yeah, so what do you want to change in Washington if you get elected? You know, that's a solid question because everybody where I'm at, we know that water is truly important to all of us. And you have candidates going on there and promising the world about, I'm going to go and I'm going to change water. Well, you have guys like Tom McClintock. You have had guys like Devin Nunes, who are big advocates, McCarthy. They can't get it done. So you think a freshman congressman is going to make a difference? Let's talk about the real issues that we can actually have a hand in. How about education? How about actually going to Washington and saying that some of our tax money that's coming down, our education money, goes into the high schools for trade schools? Okay, forget about CRT, forget about sexual exposure. The money that the uh, federal government sends down to schools, you have to use a portion of that for a trade school. 
so that each child, while they go through junior high to high school, has to have a trade school before they graduate, not a CRT or a racial class, but a trade where they get out of high school and they can actually do something. Now, that's something that a first year congressman can actually have a hand on, can sit in that committee and can't change. California is also a big state where not everybody's going to go to college, not everybody's cut out to go to college, but everybody should be entitled to be able to make a good living. So with the federal funding to junior colleges will also be to be able to put programs such as uh, trade schools in there where our people can actually go there and actually get an education on a trade to make it better. That's one of the areas where I'm gonna hit hard, I'm gonna go for it, and I will not stop till we get that because our education is our future. Our kids are our future and our future's going wayside right now because nobody cares. Everybody in California talks about school choice. School choice sounds good. They think the other schools are gonna raise their level of education. They're not because if you don't have a choice to, but to go to that school, they're not gonna do anything better to make their school better. We need to deroute the problem at the core and talk about real education and what's really being taught in our schools is really what we need to do. Our second thing that we want to accomplish, again, freshmen, right? You got to remember that we're going to be a freshman congressman. How about helping the homeless? Did you know how much money the federal government sends down to California, each county for um, homeless, yet the problem isn't solved? It's because the counties do not have to report where the money goes. So a lot of the money that comes down from the federal government for homeless actually gets used for administrative. 80% gets used for administrative, 20% trickles down to the homeless, which you really don't ever solve the problem. We're gonna do a universal uh, solution for the homeless where they get the uh, care that they need from mental health, which is huge here in California, uh, drug and alcohol rehab, and also uh, a workforce where they're actually getting trained to go to work. Just remember I said trade schools, right? We're gonna start the program with the homeless, give them a trade so they have some dignity and some honor and some respect that once they get clean, once they've been through our program, they can actually go back into society and actually accomplish something. But we have to get them off our streets in front of our businesses. We have got to get them off uh, park benches. Homeless has always been a problem, but it got worse once Gavin Newsom got into office in California and said that it is no longer against the law for homeless people to be able to sleep, eat, uh, do whatever they're gonna do in front of your business. We have gotta go back to uh, law and order, but better than that is public safety. Yeah, so what is your view? Uh, you were talking a little bit how we need to fix the education system. So I wanted to get your thoughts on uh, uh, crit critical race theory. I don't believe it should be taught. That's a great course that if you wanna to go to college and you wanna learn about it, that's great. But that's not something that we need to force down our kids' uh, brains right now or down their throats in high school. What we really need to teach them is how to balance a checkbook, how to actually change a tire, change oil, have a career. Let me ask you this. What is a high school diploma worth today? Uh, not very much. Nothing, because you can't even read past a third grade level and they're graduating you. I don't know. Uh, in California, there was a, a new law that says no kid left behind. Well, they're right. No one got left behind. They all got left behind because all of a sudden, not one, you, you went to third grade, you didn't pass, but we're passing you to participate because we don't want to leave you behind. No, that kid needs to stay in the third grade. He needs to learn before he goes to the fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade. What we have done is push kids through high school with a high school diploma that means absolutely nothing because they can't read. They don't even know where Europe is, let alone where uh, the next county is at. We have got to take education seriously and we have got to deroot it and actually do a curriculum where our kids are learning something and where they have a trade school to be able to learn in high school. So when they get out, they don't have to go to college, but they can go to work. They can go make a living. That's what high school and school is about, being able to get out of there because you're learning something. If you're learning how to play Xbox, stay home. Our tax dollars don't need to go to all these schools, but we actually need to be able to do something that these kids get out of high school and they can get a job, they can go to work. I, I love how everybody says there's no jobs available right now, yet everywhere I turn around, there's paying $17, $18 an hour. Why? Because we didn't teach our kids how to work. 
We teach our kids how to live off the system. Now we have to go back and retrain these kids to get a job. Nothing's free in this world. Yeah, I definitely agree with you there. Um, you were talking a little bit how uh, Republican parties and Democrat parties have pretty much you know, failed the American people. And I definitely agree with what you're saying there. Uh, one thing I saw when I was trying to run for state assembly, at least in the California legislature, was that it seemed like uh, big corporations and big lobbyists seemed to fund both sides, you know, both political parties. And then that's kind of why I thought, you know, there was so much bipartisan stuff going on in the state legislature. So I kind of wanted to get your thought on that. Do you think we should stop that from happening? Uh, what's your view on, you know, them funding both parties like they're doing? So both parties have failed us because people forget what party and the people they're supporting because of special interest groups. I actually heard Judge Bailey yesterday, who's actually running for California Senate 4. He said this, when I get to Sacramento, I'm going to write a bill to not allow big corporations to donate to candidates' campaign. You want to fix the problem, that's how you do it. You take the money out of the game. You do not allow big corporations to donate into uh, political campaigns. That will stop that one party or the other. The worst thing is that we have about, when I talk about both parties that failed us, I just said that there wasn't one Republican official who actually showed up to say yes on the recall. Yeah, we're looking right now to reelect them. What? That's our fault. You want to make a difference in politics? You want to make a difference on what's going on? Vote differently. Stop voting for somebody because there's a Republican that's been in office forever. Because if we're not happy right now, you don't think they had a hand to do with it? Of course they did. But we're so worried about holding on to a seat that we'll have a bad person in a seat instead of saying, hey, you know what? Enough's enough. I'll give you an example. For all of you who voted for Donald Trump, why will Valadero get reelected to Congress when he's the one who voted to impeach him? Right. That doesn't make sense to me. We need to get a better candidate who's a Republican or a conservative in that seat and get that guy out of there. Young Kim, another one who voted to impeach Trump. We have rhinos who stay in office because we're scared that we might give it to a Democrat. You know what? If we actually put our voices together and actually went after real candidates, real people that want to make a difference, we wouldn't have these issues. When a assemblyman doesn't want to answer your question why they voted yes on mail-in ballots and runs away, yet you want to vote him into Congress? What do you think he'll do in Congress? How about we just had the vote. I don't know how familiar you are with California. Our gas price is $6.75 right now. The assembly just had a vote to lower 50% of the tax, 50 cents off the taxes that they're taxing us on gas. We had, um, we had assemblymen not even show up to vote, yet they want to be congressmen. And guess what? Because they've been assemblymen, everybody thinks, oh, we need to move them up. No, we don't. California is in dire need because of these people who are in office right now. Not the new generation, not the new people trying to get in office, the people who are in office right now and they have a say on what's going on. So we, as Californians, have to say enough is enough. Stop voting the same damn people into office and get some new blood in there that will actually listen to us. And if they don't listen to us, two years from now, we vote their out and we get new people back in there. Yeah, I think you're right about that. You know, we really need to get rid of rhinos in office because, you know, they're basically, you know, the same people as the Democrats. And, you know, that brings me back to uh, Judge Bailey's plan. Uh, I thought that was a really good idea, you know, basically making it so big corporations can't fund people uh, running for office in the California state legislature. So I wanted to ask if you would support a similar plan uh, as a congressman in the federal government. If I have the opportunity to, I, I support that theory because politics have became about a money game, not the right person game, but how much money can you get? The guy with the most money is going to win. Well, that needs to stop because that's why we're in the problems that we're in right now. It shouldn't take somebody with a lot of money to win. It should take the right candidate and getting out there. The playing field should be square across the field how we do this game. And politics is how much money or who are the big backers that are putting money in your pocket to help you win. That's not the way it should be. It should be the person who actually works the hardest should actually be able to win. 
So we have got to change the way we're doing business in the state of California to get better people elected into office so that we can actually have a real Republican here who can actually help the state change around. We have border uh, securities that nobody ever wants to talk about. Everybody in California wants to go to Texas. We had our congressmen go to Texas to talk about the border. San Diego's eight hours away. Let's go to San Diego. Let's show the real problem. Let's stop tr drugs and human trafficking from coming across our borders. Immigration is so screwed up that we need an immigration reform program and it needs to get fixed. We fix the problem instead of putting band-aids on it. The wall is a band-aid, okay? I'm not against, and I'm not opposed building the wall. I'm not opposed uh, securing our borders, but we need to get it done. We got to stop talking about it and have some people with affirmative action and go get the job done. And we don't have that in our legislation today. Yeah, I agree with you. Are you a pro-life candidate? Am I what? Are you a pro-life candidate? Am I a pro-life candidate? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, I believe in pro-life and I also uh, believe in adoption, which takes you to a whole different thing in California. We need to make it uh, more accessible for adoptions to people that deserve children, but we also need to monitor, monitor where these children go once they are adopted or once the foster care system comes. So that's what we really need. Yeah. So what are you, so I was wanting to ask you a little bit about uh, medical freedom uh, in the United States. You know, there was a lot of things going on uh, where the president recently wanted everybody to get, you know, the vaccine and basically force people to wear masks. And I think it's still in effect at some airports and stuff. So I want to get your uh, thoughts on those mandates. First of all, America is a freedom. We have fought how many years for our freedom and our liberty? People run from other countries to come to America for freedom and opportunity. Yeah, we give our freedoms away every day in California when we abide by mandates. A mandate is not an order. It's not a law. It's somebody telling you, I know better than you do. I don't believe in any mandates. I believe that we're all adults. We're all human beings. And we want the best for ourselves and our families and our kids. Vaccinations. I wouldn't want to put, and I, I haven't been vaccinated and I wouldn't put a vaccination in me for nothing. And that's what the vaccination is. It's not gonna prevent you from getting COVID-19. It's not gonna help you not get it. So why do I need it? That's like me saying, cancer runs in my family. Let me go get a hit of radiology or chemo or whatever it is. The doctor will look at me and say, you're nuts. Why are you coming to chemo? You don't have cancer. Well, why am I getting vaccinated for COVID-19 when I don't have it? And then you got a booster. The worst part about this whole thing was when you have small businesses, restaurants asking people, where's your ID? Where's your vaccination card? I asked them, where was the government when they shut you down a year ago and you couldn't make ends meet? Now you're doing their job on the people who are trying to help you build your business? Apparently you don't learn from that that you wanna be a government police. I'm against 100% forcing, mandating, or obligating anybody to get a vaccination. And the worst part is I'm against AB uh, 1993, which is now gonna punish employers that their employees do not have vaccination. And I am 100% against California vaccination to work. Nobody should ever have to have a vaccination to have a job. Nobody, your medical freedom and your medical respect should be your own. Nobody should have to tell you, let me see your medical record so you can have a job. You know what? We signed a contract when we went to work. It said that you were going to drug test me for alcohol and drugs. It didn't say that I had to have a vaccination to work here. Because guess what? Most of us wouldn't have gone and gotten that job. We would have gone to the person who didn't demand that. Yet employers and the government's overreaching in our liberties, in our freedoms, in our constitutional rights. And it is time that somebody actually stands up and says enough is enough. Yeah, I definitely agree with you there. And I think that's a really great stance uh, that you're taking. As a final question, uh, what, what's your plan for uh, solving you know, the gasoline oil crisis that is happening, especially in California and across the country? How do you think we can solve that problem and make gasoline 
um, you know, become cheaper. Well, I'm going to do something nobody in Congress did. I'm going to stand up against Joe Biden and start pushing the agenda of America first. And that means we open up the XL pipeline. We actually allow drilling of oil in the state of California and in the United States to be self-sufficient. I am sick and tired of watching us depend on other countries for our oil, our energy, even our batteries to build our electric cars, when all that can be done here in the United States. And we need to take a stand of America first. And when the president says something, I'll be the biggest thorn and say, no, you don't have my vote. Not only that, I will go and campaign and grab other people on board. And if they don't do it, I'll publicize it out so their people who voted them into office can see what their legislation is not doing. It's not standing up for the American people. Why are we sending $14 billion to Ukraine when American people are starving, we're dying here, and yet we're sending them money for what? For a war we didn't have nothing to do with? We could do our own oil here. We could open up the XL pipeline. We could go to Alaska. We have enough oil. California at one time provided more gas for the United States than anywhere else. That is our biggest problem. Why are we depending on another country? Stop sending our money overseas, start reinvesting in America and go America first. We, the people who put the tax dollars in, deserve our money to stay here, not go somewhere else. Enough is enough. Yeah, that's definitely true. I've seen recently that the governor of California is now allowing, you know, new oil drilling permits. So I think you're definitely right about, you know, the United States being self-sufficient. So I'm going to uh, share your channel so everybody can see it. Uh, if you could subscribe to his channel, that would be really great. Um, and um, would you like to tell the viewers a little bit about the videos that you're making? You know what? We have videos every week. It's called Waking Up California with Diego Martinez. It's on every Thursday morning. We go on videos. We go public on everything that we do because we want to be self-transparent. We want our viewers to actually know who they're going to vote into office and why they're voting for me into office. That is one of the hardest things that people don't understand. They don't get to know the candidates. The candidates don't go live. The candidates don't say, this is what I'm about. With me, here, what you see is what you get, a blue collar worker who's fed up with the American way, is fed up with what's going on to this beautiful country. As an immigrant, I am proud to be an American. I am proud to be here. And I am proud to say that I am living the American dream. And that all happened because of the freedoms and the liberty this country had to offer. And I do not want to see that go wasted. If I can do it, Anybody else can do it. If you were born in this country, you need to get off your rear, stop making excuses and go to work and get an education and show everybody why we live in the greatest nation in the world. Yeah, I think you're right about that because, you know, we do live in the greatest nation on in the world. And I think you can definitely uh, make it for, for the better. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add about your run for Congress? You know what? I like to say this is very simple. Uh, do your work on all the, do your investigation on all the candidates. Find out which one fits best for you. Financially support them, volunteer on their campaigns and get them to the next level. Like and share their videos or their promos because that's how we're going to get our name out there. I am running because I am sick and tired of what's going on in this country. I am running because I'm tired of California losing jobs every day to other countries, to other states, because California needs help. And it all starts with our federal legislation. America, we need help right now. This is a turning point, and you hear this all the time. This is the most important election of today because we need to turn the House we need to get Nancy Pelosi out of power. We need to get the Democrat legislation out of power. We need to take back a conservative stand and put checks and balances where they belong before this guy, Brandon, kills this country the rest of the way. We have got to stop selling our land to China. We have got to start uh, taking back some of the personal ownership of our problems instead of letting government overreach on what's going on. These are all the reasons why I'm running. I'm running because I want to be the American voice in Congress, and not only for just District 13, but for America. My door will always be open to everybody who is an American who needs help. Well, that's uh, really great, Diego, and I really have to say thanks again uh, for being on the show and providing all your insight on all these really important issues, and uh, thanks for also running for Congress. 
uh, to try to tra change, you know, all these things for, for the better in the United States. Well, thank you for having me on your show. I appreciate it. Uh, look forward to uh, coming back on another time, hopefully as Congressman Martinez, where you can always have an exclusive and we can always make a better future. Well, that would definitely be great. And I look forward to that. And I would just like to say thank you to everyone who's watching the video. God bless. Thank you and have a good night.